Good morning, Tiger Scouts. For our first adventure today, we're going to be doing Tiger Bites. Um, I have my Tiger book here, the orange one, and on my book it is on page uh, 68, it starts out. There are six requirements here, and you have to do number one, number two, and at least two of the other four. So I'm going to show you all of them and let you decide which ones you want to do. For the first one, it says, with your parent or guardian, uh, or or with your den, find out about good food choices and some not so good food choices. Identify three fo foods that you think would be good and three foods that would be not so good food choices. So on my little notebook here, I've written down what I think would be three good and three not so good. Um, it can be hard to know which foods are best and there are many tools to help you learn. There is a website uh, that the government has put out called www.choosemyplate.gov and this is in your book and it shows you here what your different mixture of food should be on your plate and what proportions so it looks like here we got uh, half of it is split between grains like rice or uh, quinoa and then the other half would be protein like chicken beef or pork um, a little side of fruit and then the biggest portion is going to be your vegetables you gotta eat your vegetables and if you don't think you like vegetables keep trying new ones there's there's lots of different fruits and vegetables out there to try so keep trying one until you find one you like um, so for my three good food choices I wrote down apples celery and boneless skinless chicken breast so everybody likes chicken tenders or chicken strips um, those are really good uh, it doesn't have a lot of fat in it but it's got lots of good protein celery is a really tasty veggie and if you don't like uh, eating celery the the regular way I'm gonna show a video clip here of how to make ants on a log is what it's called and apples lots of good fiber and lots of good vitamins um, the three bad choices that I chose are gonna be candy bars and potato chips and soda and the reason the candy bar and the soda are bad for you is because it's a lot of sugar and not a lot of vitamins or nutrients and the potato chips there's just a lot of fat and a lot of grease and you're not getting very many good uh, uh, vitamins and nutrients out of just some uh, greasy potato chips although they can be tasty we want to keep those in uh, smaller amounts for Requirement number two, we're going to talk about explaining the importance of hand washing before a meal and, and clean up after a meal. Um, when I'm cooking, I wash everything down before I get started, wash my hands. Um, and we're going to talk about the right way to wash your hands. And I wash my hands a couple times throughout, especially after I'm handling any raw meats. Uh, we don't want to get that raw meat uh, in with food that you're going to be eating because you can make you sick and get you an upset tummy and nobody likes that. So the times that you should wash your hands uh, for sure are going to be after you go to the restroom, after you play with your dog, cat, or other animal, after you blow your nose or sneeze or cough, after you touch the garbage, uh, before and after you help prepare your food like I talked about, before you set the table because you're going to be touching all the clean dishes and knives and forks and spoons that go on the table um, right before you eat and before you put away clean dishes and any other time that you get any dirt or anything on your hands you want to give those a nice wash so the proper hand washing method there is five steps and we've uh, learned a lot nowadays that it's important to keep your hands clean and, and keep them washed to, to stop uh, spreading germs to other people so for step one you put your hands under clean running water and the water can be warm or cold put soap on your hands and you can use uh, liquid soap or a bar of soap rub your hands together they should be sudsy rub the backs of your hands in between your fingers your thumbs everywhere on your hands and you keep doing that for 20 seconds and that's long enough to hum happy birthday twice rinse your hands under the running water and then use a clean towel or a hand dryer to dry your hands 
and you use that towel to then turn the water off because remember we touched that faucet with your dirty hands before you had a chance to wash them so I'm gonna run inside here and get my cameraman and I'm gonna show you the proper way to to wash your hands okay for step number one here we're gonna turn the water on and I said it can be either warm or cold but I like it pretty warm okay get your hands wet all over here I have some hand soap, a pump of that, and rub your hands together all over, remember, and you should be able to hum happy birthday twice. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to you. You can see I got all between my fingers, all fingertips, back of my hands, thumbs, everywhere. I'll give these a nice rinse. Get all that soap off. Okay. And I'm going to grab my hand towel here. This is a nice clean hand towel here. This hasn't been used for food or anything else. And once you have your hands nice and dry, we use this to turn the faucet off because we touched that with our dirty hands. And there we go. I got clean hands ready to go. All right, so that takes us through requirements one and two. And for these next four requirements, you can elect to do just two of them, and that'll take you through all your requirements. So I'm going to show you all four, and you guys can decide which ones you want to do. Requirement number three is to show that you know the difference between a fruit and a vegetable and eat one of each. Both fruits and vegetables come from plants. A fruit grows from a flower and has seeds inside of it. So for example, we have apples, which is one of my favorite. Kiwis, oranges, and berries are all fruits. Can you think of some other fruits? Some vegetables, like lettuce, are the leaves of a plant. Others, like asparagus, are the stem of a plant. And some, like a turnip, and potatoes are the root. Vegetables do not have seeds inside of them and they can be many colors. How many vegetables can you name? Remember, fruits have seeds and vegetables do not, but some fruits and vegetables are kind of tricky. Think about a tomato. Um, it comes from a flower and it has seeds inside of it. So a tomato, even though we use it as a vegetable most of the time, is actually a fruit. Uh, is a cucumber a fruit or a vegetable? What about a banana? Here's the hint. The seeds might be tiny, but they're on the inside, so a cucumber is actually a fruit. Fruits and vegetables are very good for you. They can be very tasty, too. You can choose your favorite fruit and your favorite vegetable to eat, or you can try a new fruit or vegetable that you've never tried before. Have fun and go to the grocery store, and they have a lot of different stuff that you might not have tried before, so just give it a shot. Um, if you don't know how to prepare it or how to eat it, you can always uh, ask your Google machine. Alright, requirement number four. With your parent, guardian, or other caring adult, pick a job to help your family at mealtime. Do it for at least four meals. Have you ever made a meal for your family? It can be hard work. Before this adventure begins, give a high five to people in your family who make meals for you. So now it is your turn to help. Can you think of different ways to help your family at mealtime? Um, I know a lot of, the th just off the top of my head, uh, some, some of the things that need to be done is um, somebody needs to cook the food. And um, I always had a lot of fun growing up with my mom and grandma in the kitchen and they'd put me on a, a chair next to the stove and taught me how to cook that way. Um, of course, be careful because we don't want to get burned. Uh, anytime you're using a stove or anything hot, we don't want to get burned, so have an adult with you. Um, setting the table is a good one for you younger scouts to help with, and make sure you wash your hands beforehand. Um, and doing the dishes. So you can pull a chair right up to the sink and uh, hand wash the dishes, or you can just help load the dishwasher. Uh, all right, moving on to requirement number five. Talk to your parent, guardian, or other caring adult about what foods you can eat with your fingers. Of course, that's always one of my favorites. I always like to get my hands in there and get messy and 
and uh, just have a good time eating my uh, dinner. Always remember to practice your manners when you are eating with your hands. Um, you might be a tiger, but you don't want everybody to think that you eat like one. <laughs> you don't want to make a big mess. So everybody knows that you need a fork to eat some foods like spaghetti. Um, but have you ever been confused about the right way to eat a food? Knowing how to eat different kinds of food is a part of uh, learning good table manners. Good table manners make eating together a fun and special time. You can use good table manners when you eat at home. You can use them at a friend's house. You can also use them if you eat at a restaurant. When you use good table manners, you're being polite. And being polite means that you're thinking about other people. Have you ever heard the rules for eating with your hands? It's called five for the fingers. So there's five different rules to tell you how to eat with your fingers and still be polite. You should always practice these rules with an appropriate snack at a den meeting or at home and show your caring adult how you can follow each one. So five for the fingers. Number one, make sure your hands are clean. We talk about washing our hands a lot. It is very important to keep your hands clean so we're not making anybody sick or making yourself sick. Wash them before you touch any food. Wash them again after you eat. That way you do not get food on other things. Do not eat straight from a serving tray. So if you're having pizza, you can use the, the uh, pair of tongs or a spatula to get the pizza off of the serving tray and put it on your own plate. And then you can use your fingers. Um, if there's a serving spoon or fork, always use that to move your food onto your plate or a napkin. If there is not a serving spoon or fork, use your first finger and thumb. And be careful to touch only the food that you're going to be eating. Always eat so the crumbs will fall onto your plate or a napkin, not on you or on the floor. So if you're standing up, like at a lot of uh, birthday parties, there might not be seating for everybody. So this is my plate. I got a big piece of pizza on here. And pizza is one of my absolute favorite things to eat. You pick it up and you kind of move this under your chin. So anything that's sauce or crumbs or anything lands back on your plate so you're not making a mess all over the house. And also do not double dip. So this means you do not dip a chip or a vegetable into a dip, take a bite, and then put it back in there. We know that's a not a very nice thing to do and it spreads a lot of germs. So instead use a small spoon to put some dip onto your plate. And if you do not have a plate, dip the chip or vegetable one time only. All right, moving on. To requirement number six and this is going to be your last requirement and remember you only had to do two out of these last four so with your parent or other caring adult plan and make a good snack choice or other nutritious food and share it with your den so we're going to cut to a video here with Whitney teaching us how to make a couple of different healthy snack choices um, ants on a log is one of them uh, making uh, meat and cheese and cracker platter is another one um, so now is your time to really have fun. You've learned a lot about good food choices and now you can show your den that good food choices can be tasty too. Um, I said a lot of people don't maybe don't like to eat their vegetables but there's a, there's hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of vegetables and hundreds of ways to prepare them so keep trying keep experimenting and I guarantee you can find one that you like. Um, like cauliflower and broccoli uh, you guys might not eat like to eat those a lot but if you make a, a cheese sauce with it you cheese on anything and and I'll eat it with your caring adult choose a healthy snack to make make a list of the things that you will need and make sure you do not make anything that could make your friends sick so always ask to make sure nobody has any food allergies um, a lot of people have a peanut allergy or a nut allergy and those can be really dangerous if if you have a severe reaction to those so Always make sure to ask your den leader or your caring adult for an allergy list. So, In the book here it teaches you how to make your own trail mix. For that you will need popcorn, dried cranberries, almonds, dried bananas, and cereal. And if you don't have one of those ingredients you can substitute it for something else. So if you don't have dried cranberries you can use dried blueberries or uh, raisins. If you don't have almonds you can use cashews or peanuts. If you don't have dried bananas, you can use any other dried fruit. Um, I really like dried pineapple or dried mangoes. Delicious. Um, so make your list of what you're going to put in your homemade trail mix here and go to the store with an adult and buy what you need. Make sure your hands are clean again. 
and the area that you're going to be using to prepare your trail mix is clean because if you wash your hands and then you go touch a dirty table then it, everything's dirty again so um, if you want you can make up a fun name for your snack or play a game with your den to come up with a name um, one of the things that I make when we're going out on the trail for a trail mix it's called GORP G-O-R-P and it stands for good old raisins and peanuts um, I always throw a few M&M's in with mine so it's just raisins, peanuts and M&M's and that's a good one to take out on the trail with you so thanks for tuning in for Tiger Bites here we're gonna move on to uh, we have three more adventures to do today and uh, hope you guys uh, tune in we'll, we'll have some fun